Apologies, ladies and gentlemen, but you only have me. Uh, the president uh, of Nauru is, uh, has had to go to another meeting, uh, and I do apologise for that. We were hoping to be able to um, make this uh, statement together. Um, but I do want to acknowledge and thank the president for his, uh, his visit. Uh, president Angamia and his government are a good friend of Australia's. Uh, and uh, we've had a very valuable discussion today on a number of uh, key issues uh, around the Pacific, but particularly I wanted to refer to uh, our announcement about the work we're going to do together to upgrade Nauru's international airport uh, and to strengthen Nauru's uh, connectivity, safety and security. Uh, we are going to provide a $40 million grant finance package including $30 million through the Australia Infrastructure Financing Facility for the Pacific uh, and um, providing a very practical demonstration of our commitment to supporting critical infrastructure uh, in our region. Uh, these are two uh, areas of infrastructure with which I'm quite familiar uh, in Nauru, having been there in 2018 for the Pacific Island Forum meeting. Uh, we are going to support the resurfacing of the Nauru runway uh, and the provision of vital air traffic equipment to enable critical air transport for decades to come. Uh, given that uh, Nauru is, uh, is a country which lives on its uh, connectivity and particularly air connectivity, uh, this is uh, essential. That funding is also going to enable climate resilient upgrades to sections of the Nauru Ring Road. Uh, these are engagements we're going to make in close uh, partnership with the Nauruan government. Importantly, they are projects that are going to employ Nauruan locals and use local materials wherever possible to uh, also help to stimulate Nauru's economy. Um, this builds on the joint announcement uh, that we made in December between Nauru, Kiribati, the Federated States of Micronesia, Australia, Japan and the United States about the construction of the East Micronesia Cable, which will provide Nauru with internet connectivity through a submarine cable for the first time. Uh, I've seen it firsthand the difference uh, that uh, these uh, submarine cables make. Uh, we know that we've just experienced a significant trauma to the cable uh, in Tonga, but it has been repaired and, uh, and that is back operational. Still more work to do uh, in Tonga on the domestic uh, comms, but we are working and helping with that. But also in relation to the Coral Sea cables, to Honiara, to Port Moresby, the Palau Spur cable, which I turned the sod on in December uh, in Palau uh, myself, uh, with the representatives of Japan and the United States as well. Um, I can also say, and you'll see in our joint statement, uh, that we discussed Australia's support for Nauru's COVID response uh, and their progress on vaccinations. Uh, and also, uh, given uh, circumstances globally today, we have also uh, shared our concerns about the uh, Im enduring and emerging uh, international security threats, including our deep concerns about Russia's aggression towards Ukraine. And we reaffirmed both countries' support for Ukraine's sovereignty and uh, territorial integrity. Now, President Angamia is also here to uh, open uh, formally the Nauru uh, High Commission in Canberra. Uh, so we're very pleased that uh, he has been able to come uh, and to do that uh, with his High Commissioner, uh, Her Excellency Camilla Solomon. Uh, can I also say uh, in relation to uh, the Ukraine, uh, as you know, our sanctions in relation to uh, Russian President uh, Vladimir Putin uh, and key figures in his inner circle uh, have come into force uh, overnight. We have welcomed the uh, significant international financial measures that have been taken, including restricting access to the SWIFT system. Uh, we have, as you're aware, through the Prime Minister's statements, committed uh, the provision of both lethal and non-lethal military equipment and medical supplies, uh, and uh, the non-lethal aspect of that uh, is being negotiated through uh, support to NATO. I want also to remind uh, Australia and Australians that we now advise Australians not to travel to Russia. 
due to the security environment and the military conflict with Ukraine. We have raised our travel advice to level four, do not travel, uh, and to uh, leave by commercial or private means if it is safe to do so. Uh, I am advised that both uh, France and uh, the uh, United States have upgraded their travel advice in relation to Russia to leave immediately. I have just been given that advice and I will ask DFAT to similarly upgrade our travel advice. Means of departure from Russia are contracting significantly daily, including through restricted airspace uh, and commercial air carriers who are not uh, continuing to, uh, to operate. Uh, so it is important, knowing how flights between Russia and Europe have been disrupted, that uh, opportunities to fly are taken now. We also know that airports uh, in Russia are now closed to the public and there are internal disruptions uh, to those flights uh, between airports from Moscow, uh, between airports in Moscow and, uh, and other cities. Um, I want to reinforce that for anyone who is in Russia or Ukraine and who has concerns for their welfare or that of another Australian, that they can contact the Consular Emergency Centre on 1300 555 135 in Australia or overseas on plus 612 62 61 3305 from outside Australia. Thank you and I'm happy to answer uh, questions. Well, we have advised Australians not to travel to Russia, self-evidently because of the, de de the deteriorating security environment uh, and also the military conflict with Ukraine. We know that there have been uh, demonstrations and protests in Russia. We advise Australians to avoid uh, those places and to be very aware of their own security. Uh, but it is certainly in the interests of Australians who are in Russia uh, to take this travel advice seriously and to, to leave by commercial or private means uh, as soon as they are able to. The first thing I would say is that Australia's advice for travelling to Ukraine is do not travel. Do not travel. That is clear. We are aware of the potential for Australians who may seek to do that, though, to travel to Ukraine, and we will continue to monitor that. Uh, but Australian law, existing Australian law, prohibits Australian citizens and residents and holders of Australian visas from engaging in hostile activities overseas unless serving in the armed forces of a foreign country. Uh, so Australians who travel to fight uh, in Ukraine with a non-government armed group on either side of the conflict uh, or who recruit someone else to do so may be committing a criminal offence. So I think it is very important for individuals who may seek to do this to be clear uh, of the provisions of Australian laws that may apply to their activity and frankly I would strongly encourage them to, to observe the travel advice which is do not travel. Uh, we are always engaging with Australians overseas and uh, Russia would be no different uh, in terms of, uh, of those who seek uh, consular information or support. Uh, so I'm sure that that is the case. I'm sure there are Australians who have, uh, who have sought that uh, advice. Uh, there would be many hundreds of Australians uh, in Russia and then uh, over and above the individuals themselves, there may be families and permanent residents uh, as well. Uh, but we will work through our post and through officials in the Consular Emergency Centre in Canada to support any Australians as best as we are able to in these circumstances. Minister Payne, um, are there any key Russian oligarchs who have significant financial ties to Australia? 
Uh, I understand um, that question uh, arising out of uh, our decisions uh, to, to place those sanctions um, in recent days. We're working with financial institutions on that, but the importance of the sanctions decisions we have made is about ensuring that we remove any possibility of safe havens for people who have been uh, either providing advice to or engaged in the decision making of President Putin in his unlawful uh, and, uh, and wholesale breach of international law in his invasion of Ukraine. I'm not going to comment on individual um, investments and uh, and uh, details like that. Um, they will all be worked through um, according to the uh, the provisions that are determined in the sanctions process uh, and with the financial institutions involved and businesses involved. Um, so there are calls to further target key Russian oligarchs um, who hold significant assets on behalf of Vladimir Putin. Are you in discussions with other allies um, who can freeze the assets of these key oligarchs and when will this be done? Uh, well, as I've said in uh, in my comments uh, consistently in uh, in recent days, we are coordinating very closely with counterparts uh, in the European Union, in the United States, in the United Kingdom, in Canada. Japan is now engaging uh, as well on these issues, and we welcome that. We will continue to do that, uh, and our sanctions uh, procedures are still underway. They are not completed. And what is Australia's response to Putin's move to use nuclear forces on higher waters? Is this an alarm? This is deeply concerning. It's deeply concerning for the world. Uh, th with the, to be absolutely clear and to reiterate the points that I've made in recent days, this is, as I said, a wholesale breach of international law, it is a breach of the uh, United Nations Charter. It is not justified or validated in any way, shape or form. And uh, f to uh, to continue with uh, the sorts of behaviour we have seen from the President, including uh, raising uh, concerns in relation to uh, potential nuclear activity, uh, is only compounding, uh, frankly, the, uh, the list of offences that uh, have been committed thus far. Uh, we have been very clear with Australians uh, in terms of our condemnation of, uh, of Russian behaviour, and that would extend to the most recent statements by the President as well. Any more? Going back to your Nauru announcement, um, how much of this is about countering China's influence in the region? Uh, well, I think if you look at the uh, at the details of what uh, we have announced today, uh, this is about the resurfacing of uh, the Nauru Airport runway uh, and the provision of air traffic equipment. These are essential uh, functions for Nauru as a country uh, in uh, a remote area of the Pacific, uh, and it is absolutely uh, the sort of thing that a partner like Australia would always do. Uh, it is about what we can do with and for Nauru as partners, overwhelmingly. Uh, and secondly, in terms of uh, the ring road itself, uh, the sections of the ring road that need upgrading obviously are impacted by, uh, by climate events uh, in Nauru. We want to ensure that those upgrades are climate resilient, and that is part of our partnership. It's also part of the stream through the Australia Infrastructure Financing Facility on the Pacific, which is focused on climate adapted and climate resilient uh, programs, uh, and ensuring that we are responsive to the needs of our partners and uh, and that is the uh, priority that Nauru has set out for us. Uh, we did talk about that today and, uh, and I regularly talk with my colleagues uh, who are members of the uh, Pacific Island Forum about these issues. We certainly appreciate the decision by our Micronesian friends to pause uh, their withdrawals. That will give uh, more time for uh, discussions amongst Pacific Island Forum members. Uh, as the President knows uh, from our conversations over many months, we are the strongest supporter of Pacific Island Forum unity and uh, we will continue to support Fiji G's efforts towards uh, achieving a resolution. We are also very grateful for the efforts of uh, President Angamia 
uh, as the leader of the Micronesian group uh, and the work that uh, he has done there. And I hope to see very productive, hopefully in-person meetings of uh, leaders and foreign ministers of the Pacific Island Forum uh, very soon. It has been a deeply frustrating period of time to not be able to engage with our uh, friends and family uh, across the Pacific. It's over two years uh, since I've seen President Angamia in person, although we are very well acquainted by Zoom. Uh, and uh, it has been a great pleasure to welcome him here today. Thank you very much. Thank you.